on. I think the best way I can sum up is, is by addressing some of the, the points that have been raised. I mean, um, look, Christianities are very varied things, like Marxisms. Yes, I am embarrassed by George Bush. Um, though I did think that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. He had used them, and he certainly retained the intellectual capacity to build them again. He was the first person to use poison gas against anybody since the German army in August 1918. Apart from the British, apart from the British, yeah. Well, I, I'm not defending that, not. but on a, on a mass scale, I mean, they, they didn't kill that many people as he did. And I, 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 I thought that taking out Saddam Hussein was a good idea. I was perhaps wrong, and certainly I had no idea of the aftermath of what had happened and the crass insensitivity with which a completely foreign model was imposed. But then. I find that my rationality is bounded too. And that I come back to again, you see, the, the notion that we, we, can, we can engineer society in such a way that we can forget about things, like the profit motive, that that will disappear, as Marx confidently thought it would, once we produced a certain set of social conditions. Yes, I think in the end I have to contradict that central assertion of Marxism. It's not just true that social conditions produce existence and mind. I do not think that is the case. For instance, if you look at Joseph Stalin, who's been mentioned several times here, it, it is true that the social conditions in which Josef Vesyanarovich Jugafishvili grew up in the Caucasus with its complex picture of ethnic disturbances and hatreds and the commitment in that area to revenge and the elimination of enemies and violence <coughs> that certainly formed his existence those social conditions and once he became the Vojt of the USSR then that mind changed the social conditions of the USSR but mind you he was as I said in a line and tr a tradition from Lenin and Trotsky th there is no great division between these figures. They all believe in the same things. As for the so-called intervention of 21 armies, this is Bolshevik propaganda. There were minor detachments. The British detachment never got more than 6,000 people. And these were minor interventions which enabled the Bolsheviks to portray themselves as the patriotic party. The best thing that happened for them. So, I mean, you know, let's be careful with history. Let, let's think about it. Was it necessary, the carnage of the first civil war in Russia? I mean, you know, we are talking about the loss of life of three million people, Russians, by direct military action and then famines as well. Now, you know, it's very difficult to judge these things, but let us let us at least realise what went on. This was not minor bloodletting by Lenin and Trotsky. Defensive in, in nature. If it was, why did they go on past the old borders of, of Russia into Poland? You know? Try and impose their system and their ideas on a people who re resented it fiercely. I mean, you, you're right, the, the Christian church and the Catholic church particularly, and coming from my own ethnicity, I at least can be absolved from defending the Catholic church. But it has been a church which at times has represented the interests of the ruling classes. But I have to say, as I said, coming from my own fiercely anti-Catholic background, I have also to admit that there have been times when Catholic clergy have been on the side of the oppressed that the Vatican as an institution has been not that is uh, um, <coughs> another question though Catholics would if there are any Catholics here they will probably take me to task and I, I do for instance 
have a lot of time for that reading of medieval history which says it was the church asserting its power which m managed to push back the oppressive features of the feudal system I have a colleague called Naboth Machupa he's a Zimbabwean is any of you aware what the political re resonances there are when he was christened Naboth in Rhodesia as it then was in 1956 do you know the story that Naboth and his vineyard the land stolen from him by oppression and theft and murder yes I, I, I do agree with you there are ways of reading the Bible and I come from that tradition of Christianity for which the Bible is central not the magisterium of the church there are ways of reading the Bible which Fred very ably um, pointed out which show it to be a cruel book but I do believe that the more and more you read the Bible the more you get into its story and the more you interpret it through and this is the church's claim and always has been Catholic and Protestant that you interpret it through the mirror of Christ then you will see it as a profoundly liberating book taken all in all now we have, that would be a, certainly a discussion which will go on until midnight on that one I'll leave you with this thought Josef Vizjanarzvich Djugashvili was educated in a seminary he knew his Bible one of the nicknames he took and he took about 200 nicknames in his campaign of lawlessness and terrorism in the Caucasus in 1906 to 1910 before it ended to Siberia one of the nicknames he took was David now that is actually a very interesting reading of David's story King David because actually of course what he was reflecting on ironically is that element in David's story when he was precisely that sort of terrorist mafiosi boss and violent revolutionary which Joseph Stalin well Jewish really as he then was wanted to be and I tell you that story for this reason because you and I if we are brothers uh, if you are you're Marxist and I'm a Christian we come from the same stock friends there's a lot more we have in common than we think and yes I am committed to the poor and their welfare but I am not as confident as you are that the way forward is to be found in that belief in resolution and I have to say hard behind it violence matched by the violence of the oppressors perhaps being provoked by it I do not know but certainly if we look at the history of the last hundred years friends tot up the numbers 30 million for Stalin is it? a similar number for Mao? 4 million for the Khmer Rouge? not even the Inquisition it's worst killed like that not even Hitler 